Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Schloppe from CliffX Tutorials. I'm going to release a bunch of my user actions to make new features of Live 12 available as actions for CliffX Pro. You can get them on Isotonic Studio or you can become a Patreon of mine and get them over there. Now, let's have a look what's inside the box. The box being this zip file, you open it by unzipping and then you'll find these files. Um, the user actions are actually in this folder. There's also a PDF with some documentation, but foremost, there's a link to a website where all the documentation is kept up to date. To install the user actions, uh, if you've never done this before, um, go to your user library, to the remote scripts folder, and there you should find at least the CliffX Pro script files. And if you don't have a user actions folder yet, just drag the whole folder into that. If you have already some user actions installed, just um, mark all those files and pull them in, and then you should be ready to go. Speaking of which, let's have a look at uh, Ableton file. So all of my user actions have a test functionality. So if you put dash dash test as an argument, it will show you a message in the status bar. Uh, so you can double check if all the user actions are present and working. And as you can see, they're all present and they also tell you which version of the user action you have. So in case you do an update, you can check if you have the latest version. Now we start with the new actions for Ableton Live 12. You can now uh, trigger link on and off as well as the, the start and stop synchronization. All right. Now much more asked and wanted is the whole scale thing here which is really new to Ableton 12. You can toggle the scale, can turn it on and off. You can define a new root node either by number, but you also can use letters to define the scale root. Now, as you can see, you have loads of options for the type of scale, the mode. You write in without quotes and you don't have to care about case sensitivity. So scale type is the action. So when I trigger that, it switches to Dorian, a minor. The clips have also a notion of what scale they are using. And depending on what clip is selected, Ableton will automatically switch to that scale. There's nothing I can do about that. You just have to go with that. At least you can switch and access the scale functionality with CliffX now. I had to uh, reassemble my um, desktop a little bit to see this is touch OSC running. So introduced in 11.3 and also for 12, um, there is access to the name of the actual file, the Ableton set in the API and we can use this in CliffX to get the song name. If you have OC output installed and properly running, it will send the song name to um, the OC address song underscore name. So when I trigger this action, as you can see, it will show you the name of this Ableton set. Now this will automatically trigger if CliffX is loaded. So whenever you open up a song, the song name will be put out on the OSC um, automatically. Previously only possible for all tracks at once with B2A back to arrangement. Now new and much wanted in version 12 is the access to that play button in the arrangement view here to flip a track individually back to the arrangement. So this is a track action. So you can put in either one T, B to A. So T stands for track, B to A, or in this case, just the, the selected one. To trigger that, I'll use this button here. You won't see that, but okay, let's see. So I press the button, there we go. So previously, um, back to all arrangement, would press this button and it also works for groups. So if I press this here, it will flip the whole thing to the arrangement. Very handy. So what's next? Groove actions. As you know, 
you, or as you might know, you can assign uh, a groove to a clip, which are in the groove pool. And the new version of Ableton or my extension makes them available to Cliff X Pro. You can pick any of those grooves and assign them to a clip with a user clip action. It's a little bit clunky and uncomfortable to use, but that's the way it is. So groove is the name of the track. User clip indicates that it's a user action for a clip. And then there comes the actual action set clip groove. One will apply this jazz bamsha swing accent to this clip. As you can see, that worked perfectly. And the same goes for the second. And you also can use uh, the name of the groove. You have access to all of those parameters. So for example, the quantized action will apply to the currently selected groove of that clip. So in, the, in that clip, we have the swing 16th um, selected. So whenever I call this user action, you can define this percentage here as well for the random or for the timing as well for the velocity. The base I currently do not have implemented, but um, I'll have a look at that. Probably it's really easy and I'll add that in a future update. Next, that was also a request from my Patreon. So the select next to playing action. This is a track action. It's applied to this track. It will select this clip slot just down or just next to the one which is playing. All right. So when I trigger this action, it will go down and press this next clip slot for recording purposes, for example. Um, this might be really helpful if you want to select this clip slot here, which is the next empty one. Ah, yeah, one thing, cell next to playing is fairly long action name. So uh, you can use either that or you can use cell NTP, which does exactly the same thing. It points to the same function. If you add empty as an argument, it will select the next empty clip slot because you can't define a variable in a macro. And so I wrote a user action to do that actually. So this will set var is the name of the action. So you type in the name of the variable without the percentage signs, and then anything which comes after that will be put into that variable. So now here is, you can see a long sting, <laughs> I meant actually string. There's a known bug. Uh, which prevents using a variable and a macro in the same action list. Um, I have variable var2 and in a macro, which is simply uh, messaging out the variable. If I use that in the same action list, so defining a variable and then calling the macro, as you can see, nothing happens. And even worse, the macro stops working. So you have to re-init. This will reset all the variables and all the macros. So now the macro works again. This action set var macro. First argument is the name of the variable, then a value, and then the name of the macro. And if I trigger that, as you can see, it now works perfectly. Next one is a snapshot related user action. And uh, what happens if you trigger a snapshot action, it will rename the clip. In some cases, I really found that unpractical. So I did a user action called snap UA. And as you can see, um, it is used just as the original snap, but it won't rename the clip, but of course it will take a snapshot. So if I randomize, here and take a snapshot and then go back, it will recall that. Please note that the snap UA action is working only for a single track. If you want to snap more than one track, you have to use snap range UA. And the first argument are the tracks you want to 
uh, snap, you can either use a list or you can also use, let me quickly show that, expression like all or selected or arrange and a list like, like this. Just make sure that there is no white space uh, in between those tracks and then that will work just as expected. So let's snap this and then randomize and then take another snapshot. And, and as you can see, this worked just perfectly. Last but not least, um, this is a really nice action, which is quantized waiting. So this will wait until the bar is finished or like a certain amount of time is finished and uh, trigger then an action list, which is the second argument. So that means if I trigger that action and I'm at the beginning of a bar, it waits until the bar is finished and at the beginning of the next bar, it will trigger that action. If I trigger that at the end of the bar, it will trigger it just right after the beginning of the next bar. Okay, let me quickly demonstrate this. And when I trigger this after the one, after the next one, it shuts off the metronome. Okay, once again, but this time at the end of the bar. Two, three, four, one. Okay, the same goes for two bars. Two, three, four, one more bar. And after the one, it's off, all right? This can be super useful if you want to apply groove actions or quantize actions for a clip which was recording, but you have to wait until the next one, until it's finished recording so you can apply the action. I'll add more actions over time, especially for the Looper, the Auto Shift plugin and the Roar device. You will get those updates free of charge if you bought this pack or are a Patreon. So what else is in the box? There I included some files which I took from the forum, but are hard to find and also are a little bit buggy. OSC actions and binding viewer component, those two will put data out of Ableton and send it to Touch OSC, for example, um, where you can watch your bindings and data from bindings. I'll cover that in a different video as well. The shift action and the Q mode action. All right, so what else is in there? Um, I uh, included um, a sample thing for the preferences file. So just take this, copy it at the end of the preferences file and you're good to go for the OSC. Okay, some goodies. So I often got asked what this is. This is actually a super nice tool. I took that from also the forum, you can get them. So if you press this button, a window will pop up where you can uh, type in any cliffx command and test them um, instantly. I map this to shift X, for example, you can use any other key command. Um, unfortunately, you can't copy paste with your like command C and command V. Um, and also for longer action lists is quite hard to read. But um, Jason Chainsaw Art also uh, provided us a different tool which is much longer where you can have a long action list actually copy and paste it. Thanks again Jason for that gift, it's really awesome. Last but not least there is the note trigger rack which is like tucked away in the lesson. So uh, just take those four files and drag them into your user library and you're ready to go. That's it for today. Thank you very much. Stay happy, stay healthy and always stay in control. Peace.